Hi, my name is John. Welcome to another SMC technical training video. During this video, we will show you how to set up the JXC91 controller to move an electric actuator. During this video, we will show you the software and equipment that you need, and we'll demonstrate step by step exactly what needs to be done. By the end, we will have steps programmed so that the controller can move the actuator. Let's get started. You'll need a PC with drive accessibility and software to complete this configuration. Please refer to our earlier JXC91 video for general hardware layout and setup. Now, let's get the ACT controller software ready. Choose the most current ACT software version or upgrade from a software or the SMC World website. Your PC will need the serial port driver too, similar to this SMC serial port. See the operation manual for details. Now let's start the ACT software. No need for network connectivity here either, but make sure the JXC91 SI port is on and running. Double click on the ACT controller icon to begin the program. We'll choose easy mode to start. There's no communication yet with the controller, so we need to change the COM setting. Go to the control panel and into the device manager then into the ports in use and here we will see the SMC serial port is on COM6. So change the port to COM6 and the COM speed to the actuator default. Hit OK to confirm the controller connection and upload the parameters. The controller now sees the actuator so we have a successful COM port connection. Now we can start making step moves. If you have any status information at this point the actuator has been powered up before Set on means that the home position is known, and in position shows it completed its last move. It is not busy, the servo has not been turned on yet, and we are not in an alarm condition. If we click on the monitor button, we see an important safety feature. Do not select OK here until it is verified that the actuator can be run safely. Once verified, choose OK. The button changes into test as the servo comes on allowing us to actively proceed with moving the actuator directly from these button controls. Let's start with the most important position move, a return to origin. Hit the button and the actuator backs up, hits a stop, and then sets the encoder to its origin or home position. One way to move the actuator is with the jog buttons. If you hold down the jog button, the actuator will continue to move in that direction and the position, speed, and force readings will change with the movement as long as you hold the button. The other way to move the actuator is through the move buttons with a direction and fixed distance to choose from. We'll start with 10 millimeters, plus or minus, and we can repeat it with the position range. Changing it to 20, we get close to the limit. If you go an additional 20 millimeters like this, you'll set off the alarm as you are trying to go beyond the limits. You can check the alarm by clicking on it. Reset the alarm and proceed. Then you can back up 20 millimeters and continue. Now let's teach the controller positions for a repeatable operation as needed. The first step is to return to origin. Let's set zero as our starting position. We need to choose whether our move will be an absolute or relative movement. An absolute movement will set an exact position on the slide. A relative movement adds or subtracts distance from its current position. We want to choose an absolute move to go to the origin. Once selected, we see our step move defaults filled in. Speed is how fast we go to the position chosen. Pushing force and trigger level work together, but you only need them if you are pushing at the end of the move. In position is simply how close you must be to turn on the in position status. So now with the data ready for move number zero, we will press drive and it just sits there because it's already in that position. Let's use jog to teach a move. We press and hold jog to get out close to 50%. Remember, for an application you will want to get this exact, so jogging allows you to dial it in visually. Assuming we're on the spot we want, pick step move number one, an absolute move, and get position to lock it in. Now, to set step move number two, go to absolute and advance the actuator over with a plus 20 move. We'll get that position again and lock it in. Instead of using the speed defaults, let's change them. 
For step move one, let's go 100 millimeters per second, and then 200 for step two. To finish, let's just type in step move number three. So pick an absolute move, then go 250 millimeters per second to the 100 millimeter position. Let's try out our moves now. First, start with a return to origin. To get to step move one, just select it and press drive and it goes there. While it is driving, it will say busy until it gets to the end position. Do the same move for two, then move three, and finally back to move zero, which are all successful moves. These moves are saved to the actuator, but you may keep them for future or duplicate setups by saving the file to the PC. We hope you found this video useful. Look for our next JXC91 video where we will show you how to use step data with and without a PLC to control the actuator's movements.